Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Oh, hang on. This week, scientists detected an unusual and surprisingly high amount of CFC-11 in the atmosphere, a chemical that seriously damages the ozone layer. CFC-11 is a chlorofluorocarbon, and levels of it have risen where it really shouldn't have. CFC-11 was banned internationally by the Montreal Protocol in 1987, and most of it was coming from the production of refrigerators. However, researchers say that this sudden rise of CFC-11 in the atmosphere is probably due to illegal emissions coming from East Asia. Also, SpaceX launched another Falcon 9 rocket this week, this one being an improvement on all the others, called the Block 5. It is designed to be the most reliable rocket ever, according to Elon Musk, and, unlike the previous Falcon 9 rockets, it is meant to have no refurbishment whatsoever between flights, being able to do 10 without having any parts replaced at all, meaning that the lower stage could be reused in 24 hours. And moving on, the recently discovered hominid species, Hominoledi, has a pint-sized brain. However, it was a powerful one. The brain had similarities to current human brains, but gives some more insight into how the homo side of the brain evolved away from ape-like brains. It also gives insight into the idea that the evolution of humans was constantly driving towards bigger, more complex brains. Scientists have created a replication of how some of the first life on Earth, in the form of RNA, could have replicated itself. They say that this kind of replication system is unlike any other of its kind today. I mean, that, that's it for this one, without going into too much detail. In other news, Europa, one of the moons of Jupiter, may have water vapour plumes shooting out of it. This is crucial, because it means that Europa may have the necessary ingredients needed to create and sustain life. Scientists are still going through data collected by the NASA satellite Galileo in 1997, and some of it suggests that there may be water vapour plumes venting out of its icy shell. The second oldest Mr. Seat whale we know of was described this week, revealing that the evolution of baleen was actually more complicated than previously thought. This 34 million year old whale achieved a large size, but did not possess baleen, instead having well developed gums and teeth for preying on other animals. It's widely known that incubation temperature affects whether baby turtles and other reptiles are born male or female, but a new study this week has uncovered an important part of what actually makes this happen. The research demonstrates that cooler temperatures turn up a gene known as KDM6B in turtles, which is a kind of genetic switch that activates male development. A new crocodiliform from the Jurassic period was named this week, and it represents an interesting point in this group's evolution. This was a large animal, approaching 5 metres in length, and displayed adaptations to an aquatic lifestyle, while also retaining armour. This new species provides more context on the evolution of marine thalatosuchians, and the various adaptations they show to marine lifestyles. And finally, on Dinosaur Day, which was Tuesday the 15th this year, an interesting debate was occurring in the UK. Brian J. Ford, who thinks that all non-avian dinosaurs were too big to live on land and therefore must have all been aquatic, despite all the evidence suggesting the contrary, has recently published a book about his ideas. As part of the book deal, he went up against paleontologist Darren Naish, who used actual science to argue against Ford's ideas. The debate was apparently recorded and hopefully will be uploaded online at some point. Thank you for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great week and we'll see you on Sunday.